This is Fresh Air. I'm David Cooley, TV critic for the New York Daily News, sitting in for Terry Gross. Over the last 40 years, singer-songwriter-guitarist Richard Thompson has made a lot of great music in different settings. In the 60s, it was as the guitarist for the British band Fairport Convention, one of the most important folk rock groups. In the late 70s and 80s, he performed with his wife Linda Thompson. Since their divorce, he's performed solo, continuing to create evocative music, often darkly humorous, sometimes just dark. Last year, Thompson released the CD Front Parlor Ballads. And this winter, Free Read Records has brought out a diehard fan's dream. RT, The Life and Music of Richard Thompson, a five-CD box set of previously unreleased material, most of it from Thompson's live performances. This one was recorded in 1992. Says red money to James That's a fine motorbike A cook of fear special and ain't no such like Says James to Red Molly, my hat's off to you. It's a Vincent Black Light in 1952. And I've seen you at the corners and cafes, it seems. Red hair and black leather, my favorite color scheme. And he pulled around behind and down to Box Hill. They did ride. That's Richard Thompson's Motorcycle Ode, 1952 Vincent Black Lightning. The box set also includes demos of songs he's never put out and a set of songs Thompson's has covered, such as Substitute by The Who and Buddy Holly's Not Fade Away. At Fresh Air, we practically have our own vault of live Richard Thompson music. Today, we'll hear excerpts from two studio concerts. The first is from 1994, when Thompson brought his guitar to the Fresh Air Studios and spoke with Terry about his CD, Mirror Blue. He opened with Easy There, Steady Now. I don't know what I was thinking about when this was written. It's, it's a very kind of paranoid song, a very... Uh, uh, it's a kind of a real kind of urban desolation song, I suppose. And, um, you know, the, the guy singing the song is really kind of controlling, trying to control himself. But yeah, you get the feeling that, you know, he isn't going to succeed. <laughs> um, it's a little dark as a song. Um, but I thought, well, you know, dark song, let, let, let's put it to a nice wacky sort of polka beat. <laughs> and that'll fool everybody into thinking it's uh, something a little lighter than it is. So it's got strange things. Um, I play a lot with an acoustic bass player, D D Danny Thompson, who's uh, no relation. But um, the, the, the arrangement for this, we kind of worked up together. Uh, so, you know, some of his ideas were when is the arrangement. So it's, it's a kind of, it's funny kind of, you know, Bulgarian bits and things in it. Um, I don't know where they come from. <laughs> all over the road excuse me i had to smile lost my grip too for a while i said easy there steady now easy there steady now she didn't have a decency sweep away what's left of me i don't have the presence of mind to walk along in a straight line easy there steady now Easy there, steady now I call your name I call it loud I see your face In every crown Town. Dr. Martin's echo down Old man heartbreak follows you Corruption shadow swallows you 
Is it easy there? Steady now. Easy there. Steady now. Easy there. Steady now. Easy there. Steady now. I could think of another guitarist who combines the best of folk and rock better than you do. Um, and I'd like to like go back to when you first got a guitar and ask you about what you were listening to then, what direction you thought you wanted to head in back when you were however old you were. I don't know if I had a direction. You know, <clears throat> I don't think you think when, when you're that young. Or if you do, you're, you're you know, Mozart or something. Um, what, why'd you want a guitar? There was already already a guitar in the house. Uh, yeah, my father played guitar, and uh, there's a lot of guitar music in the house. Yeah, you know, Django Reinhardt records and Les Paul records, and uh, then my my older sister, you know, when rock and roll came along, she had uh, Buddy Holly records and uh, Gene Vincent records. So it was lots of guitar stuff. So it was very logical to to pick it up and play it, and um, I really tried to play everything. Um, so I really absorbed, you know, a lot of folk stars and a lot of, of rock stars, you know, really, um, you know, probably before I was 15 or 16. What was your father playing? He was playing dance band jazz, very badly, though. He's, he wasn't, a, you know, he was just an amateur musician. And, um, to what, what context did he play? He was, he was a policeman? Yeah. So he, uh, he was, you know, he just noodled around the house. I mean, I think at some point he was in a, a dance band, you know, as, you know, the, the, you know, the swinging cops or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the four truncheons. Are <laughs> <laughs> so did, did you teach yourself? I um, taught myself a bit. Um, my, my sister's boyfriends uh, used to teach me. Uh, a couple of, of her boyfriends um, you know, played guitar. So I, you know, while they were waiting for her to get ready, which is usually a good couple of hours, um, I, I get a, a good guitar lesson. And then um, I took classical lessons at one point for a couple of years. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah. So when you were when you were say a teenager, mm -hmm. what were the the licks that you were trying uh, hardest to to learn? Um, oh, you know, that's a, the, you know, the Buddy Holly sort of stuff. That's why I'm in the wrong tune. Right? Um, um, you know, that's sort of Elvis stuff. Um, that sort of stuff. Um, the, the Shadows, who were a great uh, British instrumental band, were very that kind of stuff. Um, and the, the sort of folk stuff, yeah. <laughs> and away we go, away, Santiago. Bounce oh. <laughs> off the street, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Look at that sort of stuff, you know. Um, I used to go to folk clubs as well, so, so you, you'd get a real diet, you know, you, you'd, you'd see someone really good, you, you know, you'd see Davy Graham one week and then somebody like really atrocious next week. But then, you know, you, you could see blue, blues artists coming to Britain from about 63 onwards, 63, 64. And did they leave a big impression on you? Oh yeah, I mean, it's great, you know, you, you could see someone, you know, you'd heard on a record and, and you thought they were dead and then, you know, they'd turn up, it was just fantastic. So you were learning to, to pl play in, in many different languages, really, when you were starting. Did yeah, you... so I really used to play a very wide uh, range of music. And when Fairport started, we were really doing the same kind of thing. You know, but, um, We tended to be whatever band was required to get the gig. So if they wanted an acoustic band to, to play in the folk club, you know, that was us. You know, we'd, we'd just get a repertoire together and do that. And if they wanted a blues band, then you know, we'd, we'd, we'd learn some blues and be a blues band. So it was, uh, I suppose it was a good education. And at a certain point, we, we settled down to playing a kind of, you know, a, 
a sort of a traditional based uh, rock style that fairly constant, still constant for me. But you really have a lot of folk in in your playing and in your singing. Mm -hmm. I think you have family from Scotland. You were yeah. you grew up in London. But was it was it ever a roots kind of thing for you? It was yeah. Well, you know, I I grew up you know listening and not really thinking about um, you know Scottish music. Um, you know, there's a lot of Scottish dance music in the house, and um, you know the that, that your fam parents played. Yeah, or? you know, and the bookshelves were lined with sort of Walter Scott and, and Robert Burns and stuff, which you know, out of boredom, you know, I, I used to read, and, and uh, actually, I, I kind of got into, and um, and uh, but, you know, but but back a generation, my, my family really used to be very musical. You know, my my un my great uncles um, used to have a dance band, you know, in, in some, uh, and they play. Scottish country music and jazz. Scottish country music? Is yeah. it like just... Scottish dance music. Oh, know, okay, like, you know, right. Yeah, I kind of, yeah. sorry, I'm in the wrong tuning again. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Uh, you know, kind of, you know, yeah. Did you like that when you were growing up? Because a lot of people grow up very much disliking the music of their parents and their grandparents, and then when they get older, they go back to it. Uh, I liked it, but I, but I discarded it. I, I, th I thought it wasn't important, and it definitely wasn't fashionable. Um, you know, until um, till I was about, you know, 17, 18, really. And, uh, and why did you go back to it then? Well, I started to listen to more traditional music, and I started to connect it. Um, uh, you know, get, going to folk clubs and hearing a, a really great, you know, Scottish-Irish singer... Um, I thought, oh, you know, the, 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 this will make sense, you know. Um, now, did you think it would make sense within the context of your playing? You know, would, did you think you'd find a place for it in the, within the context of rock and roll? No, I, I really didn't think so. But, but in fair part, you know, we were, we were sort of a, a thinking band, you know, but we were a bit intellectual, you know, for better, for worse. And um, we, we used to think, well, you know, you know, what should we do? You know, what's our direction? You know, do we want to be, a, you know, a secondhand British blues band? You know, do we want to be a, a really lousy soul band? You know, do, 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 or do we want to be original? And in pursuit of sort of originality and meaning, I think in our music, um, it, it took us to uh, to play uh, traditional music with, with a more contemporary lean, um, you know. And that for us was satisfying. And we thought, well, you know, here's something that that, that we can do best. Here's something, you know, Muddy Waters that ever tries to sing the Bonnie Bunch of Roses, <laughs> he'll come really unstuck. You know, we can show him a thing or two. Richard Thompson from a 1994 Fresh Air Studio concert. There's a new box set out compiling unreleased material from Thompson, much of it from live performances. We'll get back to our concert in a moment. This is Fresh Air. Let's get back to our 1994 interview and concert with Richard Thompson. Terry spoke with him after the release of his CD, Mirror Blue. You want to do another song for us? Okay, uh, yes. How about another one from the new album? There's a song called uh, Mingus Eyes, which is uh, Charles Mingus. And, uh, yeah, it refers to Charles Mingus. Yeah. yeah. Do, do, you, do you want to say something about the song? I, I could say that I suppose it's a song... Um, of someone looking back at youth, you know, and saying, you know, how stupid uh, people are when they're young, because they think if they look like James Dean, um, then people will think they're cool and intelligent. Actually, people think they're stupid. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps at some point in your life, you you, you realise that you look stupid. So, um, you know, in, in the song, you know, the the, uh, the the protagonist says, you know, well, well, he, well, he used to think, um, you know, if, if I um, if I talk like Marlon Brando, and and, and people can't understand me, and um, if I uh, if if I make big soulful eyes at people that like Charles Mingus, then perhaps they'll think I'm really great, but maybe not. <laughs> What a thing 
times you fell But then she got wise Brand old mumble Something else I have to say about your guitar playing. It's all, uh, all the technical virtuosity is in service of the music and the emotion. I, I just feel like you're such a not show off player. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. S such. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I felt well, I, I had to point you. that out. Yeah. No, I, I, um, Anyways, people, yeah. yeah, I love it. Now, now I had to talk to you about your voice too. We've been talking about, about your playing. Mm -hmm. um, back in the days when you were learning Buddy Holly licks and Elvis Presley, you know things off of Elvis Presley records and stuff. What were you trying to do vocally? Did you think of yourself as a singer yet, or were you just no, focusing really. on guitar? I, I, you know, I didn't really sing, um, except for my own amusement. Probably, I, I'd probably get up in a folk club and sing, but it was pretty awful. I'm sure. I, I, I never really, you know, tried to be a singer. Until um, I think when Sandy Denny left left Fairport, um, then uh, us chaps we, we sort of looked at each other. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so oh, who's going to sing? <laughs> so um, we sort of reluctantly, you know, took on the roles. Um, but but we weren't born singers. I mean, you know, I, I've really had to work very hard to get anywhere as a singer, and I'm still working at it. And uh, you know, even even ten years ago, you know, I, I don't think I was very, very good at all. And twenty years ago, I was pretty horrible. So, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, singing live a lot and doing solo shows a lot um, helps me to be better. Richard Thompson, recorded in 1994. We'll hear more from Thompson in the second half of our show, including his cover of a Britney Spears hit. We'll end this half of Fresh Air with his version of The Who's Substitute. It comes from a new box set called RT, The Life and Music of Richard Thompson. I'm David Biancooli, and this is Fresh Air.
This is Fresh Air. I'm David Bean Cooley, sitting in for Terry Gross. Singer-songwriter Richard Thompson has a new box set of previously unreleased material called RT, The Life and Music of Richard Thompson. On today's show, we're dipping into our own archives to feature excerpts of his Fresh Air performances. In 2002, Thompson came to Fresh Air to play songs from a show based on great tunes he didn't write, called A Thousand Years of Pop Music. It included a Shakespearean song, an aria from Henry Purcell, and music by Hank Williams, The Beatles, ABBA, and a hit song from Britney Spears. Terry asked him about that one. Nowadays, when people want to il illustrate how bad certain pop music is, they will use as an example, Oops, I Did It Again, the big hit by Britney Spears. Um, well, would they do that, really? Well, yeah, that's a so, shame. <laughs> you um. have taken that song and you're doing it in your show. Obviously, y y there's something that you really like about the song or or the record well i think it's a good song i think it's um somewhat in the swedish pop tradition as, as far as i know that the, the songs are written and recorded in sweden and um and then they get, they get flown over to the states and, uh, and britney puts the voice on and then they fly them back and and produce them and and uh the results are mega you know um <laughs> but uh, you know i i kind of like swedish pop music you know the cardigans and the abba and and what have you you know um uh, and I think it's actually, a, it's kind of a good song. It's, uh, it's, it's quite witty in its own way. And uh, I don't think it's terrible. I, I, could, I could find a lot more terrible songs around these days than this. Oh, well, why don't you do it for us? Okay. I think I did it again I made you believe We're more than just friends It might seem like a crush But that doesn't mean that I'm serious But to lose all my senses It's just so typically me Ooh, baby, baby Oops, I did it again I play with your heart Got lost in the game Ooh, baby, baby Oops, you think I'm in love That I'm sent from I'm dreaming away Wishing that heroes Truly exist I cry watching the dust You see I'm a fool In so many ways But to lose all my senses That's just so Typically me Ooh, baby, baby Oops, I did it again I play with your heart, got lost in the game Ooh, baby, baby, oops, you think I'm in love Yeah, I'm sent from above I'm not that innocent That's good. It's not so bad, is it? Yeah, <laughs> that's very good. Richard Thompson recorded in 2002. That was one of the songs included in his show, A Thousand Years of Pop Music. Let's keep moving and get right back to the other Richard Thompson concert we're featuring today, recorded in 1994. Now, you do have this very, uh, like, uh, emotionally upfront quality in your voice. You know, you always sound, if the character is being tormented by the memory mm -hmm. of somebody, you sound like you are Absolutely. experiencing that torment. You know, I mean, there's just... There's... I, my soul is in torment <laughs> most of the time. No, but I mean, you do have this very uh, emotionally upfront quality in your singing. Now, for somebody who didn't think of themselves as a singer, usually if somebody doesn't think about themselves as a singer, they're a little bit more, like, reserved because they're unsure. Mm. I think sometimes it's an advantage to, to not be a, a singer. You know, I, you know but I think Bob Dylan's a great singer, but you, you wouldn't say he's a accomplished singer. Right, know? right. Uh, you know, I think, you know, Randy Newman, you know, sings his own songs really well. You know, Ry Cooter sings his own stuff really well. You know, uh, you, you, you know, you, you can be a singer who gets in the way of, of the song. I, excuse me for just, uh, just like I don't mean to make yourself conscious or anything, but there's something else you do in your singing. Sometimes at the end of a line, you'll your voice will drop and you'll half speak, half sing a mm. word, which is really effective. Oh, I don't know where that comes from. Um, maybe it's, it's it's coming from not being able to hold the notes or something. Uh, 
Do I like it? Well, you know, Gordon Lightfoot's a great singer. I've always enjoyed his singing, and, and I'm probably influenced by, you know, Gordon Lightfoot and, and people like Muddy Waters. And, uh, who, who else? Um, a lot of that, you know, Irish singers like, like Joe Heaney, you know, where, where, where you know, the, 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 the emotional payoff of, of a traditional song is often, often when, when you hit the low note, you know. And shine the bunny bunch of roses all. You know, and you get this real <laughs> sort of, wow, you know. <laughs> There's a, another song I'd like to ask you to do called I Can't Wake Up. Okay, here it comes. In my nightmare, everything's wrong. I'm waiting for love, but you come along. You smile, you wave, you kiss me, ciao. But you seem too happy to see me somehow. Then the sky falls in on my head Your nails grow long, your eyes turn red You say forever, dear, and a day You swear that you're never gonna go away And my feet won't move to run the other way And I can't wake up to save my life No, I can't wake up Save my life In my nightmare you forgive me The cruelest gift you could ever give me You say that you understand me now Your eyes say, brother, I get you somehow And then the lightning streaks across the room you smell like something fresh from the tomb You squeeze too hard, you insist on kissing But it seems like half your face is missing And your hair's turned into reptiles hissing And I can't wake up to save my life No, I can't wake up to save my life I don't make my dreams go bad Like Boston boys coming home to dad But you reap so surely you sow The feet don't fail me, go man go Cause I can't wake up to save my life No, I can't wake up to save Is there a story behind the song? <laughs> That's just, you know, it's just a story. <laughs> oh, <no>. oh, <clears throat> it's just a dream, you know. A um, bad dream. Bad dream. I suppose it's a kind of, uh, it's a, I suppose a, kind of, a classic put down song, really. It's, uh, you know. Richard Thompson recorded in 1994. We'll hear more of his interview and performance in a moment. This is Fresh Air. Let's get back to our concert with Richard Thompson. His new box set, RT, The Life and Music of Richard Thompson, is a collection of previously unreleased material. Oh, spare me from having to read your lyrics and, and sounding no, like me. I'm giving the squarest <laughs> reading in the world. So uh, there's, there's something I want to quote here. Can I, can I ask you to quote the line? This is from uh, The Way That It Shows. I just think it's a, a particularly well-written 
couple of lines here. Can you can you quote the first few lines? Oh, that one. I'm going to give yourself away to some Casanova on the spills and stains of a backstage sofa. He, he'll catch you yawning with one leg over. I, 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 yeah, I think that's really great writing. I mean, I think uh, Casanova over. Well, I, I, at that point, I, 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 I was the rhyme scheme was getting desperate. I, I was running out of possibilities. I'm not even thinking about the rhyme, but the, the, sp <laughs> the spills and the stains on, on the couch. I, I thought that was really nice. Mm. Did you? I, I was actually thinking of a, of, a, of, a, of a backstage in Philadelphia. Uh, oh, really? I can't remember what the place is called. A really sort of rundown rock and roll theater. It's got the smelliest couch I've ever seen in my life. Huh. Yeah, you, know, you, you can sort of smell the, the sort of improvised sex oozing off, off this couch. <laughs> Quite disturbing. No, who are the songwriters you admire? Um, and, and did you ever go through a period of trying to write in the manner of different songwriters like you went through a period of trying to play in the style of different guitarists? Yeah, I think it's a great exercise. I, I still do it. You know, I still think, well, um, you, know, you know, here's a songwriter who you know, has a great kind of flow or something. You know, um, why, why don't I try and write, write a song in that style? Um, you know, I still do that. Um, you know, early on, I was, I was listening to. Um, well, I was listening to, to you know people like the Everly Brothers and you know Phil Oaks and Richard Farina and uh, and I've always been influenced by um, by Scottish ballads. I think that's probably the richest place uh, you can find songs because um, they're just so good and and they're so stunningly you know succinct. But the, uh, and they tell they tell whole stories. They, they, you know, there's so much in a verse, um, and it's so beautifully uh, pared down over centuries. Uh, just wonderful stuff. So that, that, you know, that's a big influence. Uh, and uh, and so some of the Scottish you know writers like um, you know uh, Carolina Oliphant and uh, uh, Burns, you know Burns Walter Scott. Can Can I ask you to play a chorus of one of your songs that you feel is especially in influenced by traditional Scottish ballads? Gosh. Um, okay. Let's think of it this, okay. Mm. Oh, you speak the words locked in my breath, but it's late for me. Let an old man rest. more black and tan on the barricades to keep me safe from loving it goes on but in, in terms of you know um you know verse structure um you know, word usage, word, word repetition, mm -hmm. blah, 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 you know, and tune, I mean, it's very... And the way you're saying it. Very Scottish, yeah. yeah. What I'd like to ask you to do now is uh, sometimes when we, when we have a concert, especially with somebody who mm -hmm. writes their own songs, I, I'd like to ask the performer to do a song that is uh, kind of out of character, something mm -hmm. that we might be surprised that you like because it might seem out of character, or a song that... A lot of people think of as, as a kind of square, not very interesting song, but a song that you love and you'd like to um, uh, resurrect. So, any songs you'd want to do that fit into any of those categories? Well, okay. <laughs> I asked him about this earlier, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here's something from Carousel. Um, Great. Great. <laughs> I hope. Let me see. When you walk through a storm Hold your head up high And don't be afraid of the dark At the end of the road There's a golden mile And the sweet silver song Of the light Walk on
through the rain Will your dreams be tossed and blown Walk on, walk on With hope in your heart I love that. I thought that was great. It's a great song, yeah. Well, what made you think of that song? Um, I don't know. I've always liked it. In England, it's a football song. Uh, is it yeah. really? It's associated with, with uh, Liverpool Football Club, and oh. it's, uh, it's actually a hit for, for Jerry and the Pacemakers. <laughs> but you don't remember <laughs> them doing that? Oh. I don't think they would have released it here. They wouldn't have bothered. But, oh. um, so I was wondering how you knew all the words. Most people could sing a chorus, but they couldn't get through the whole song. Well, it does go around again the same. Yeah. I, think. <laughs> I, I was going to spare you that. <laughs> <laughs> I have really just so enjoyed the concert. I'm so thrilled we were able to do this. I want to thank Good you on. very, very much. I, I, I'm very grateful you'd have me. Thank you. Would Would you like to close with another song from sure. the new album, or or if you prefer some some, some something earlier? Or? Yeah, I could do something earlier. Yeah, you? great. Yeah, what would you like? Uh, do you feel like? so good? Okay. Yeah, why don't you feel so good? Okay. So, this is from a, a previous album from a couple of years ago called Rumor and Sigh. It is indeed. Yes, here we go. Right. Feel so good, I'm gonna break somebody's heart tonight. I feel so good, I'm gonna take someone apart tonight. They put me in jail for my deviant ways. Two years, seven months, and sixteen days. Now I'm back on the street in a purple haze. I feel so good. I feel so good. Somebody's hot tonight I feel so good I'm gonna make somebody's day tonight I feel so good I'm gonna make somebody pay tonight I'm old enough to send But I'm too young to vote Society been dragging on the tail of my coat But I've got a suitcase for 50 pounds and a half-naked woman with a tongue down my throat And I feel so good And I feel so good I feel so good I'm gonna break somebody's heart tonight They made me pay for the things I've done Now it's my turn to have all the fun That's Richard Thompson, recorded in 1994. A new box set, RT, The Life and Music of Richard Thompson, has just been released.